Alex. Let's go. Action! series was very much an experiment and we feel that that experiment was about 50% successful. We feel the one hour format is more suitable, we feel we've improved our ability to integrate CG with live action and we've done some recasting so we're feeling much better. You know there's a different uh, uh, feel with doing an MOW, the story's got to be bigger and we just sort of felt once we got into actually writing these episodes that we were much more suited towards you know, one hour kind of thing. Here's our characters, they go to a planet, strange things happen, they leave, it blows up, and it seems to me, I think we're much more suited to this. It's a sci-fi series that you can't compare with any other sci-fi series. Take all the sci-fi series that exist and add Monty Python humor to it. It's dark, it pushes the envelope a little bit, it does do things that I, I don't see anywhere, except for maybe on The Simpsons or South Park or X-Files. Just something that's a little different. And that's exciting for a director, of course, when you're doing something that nobody else is doing. If we don't go for what's dangerous, that we're just moving into territory that other people have covered, you know, and there doesn't seem to be any point in that. I know exactly what I'm looking for in a man. <laughs> oh, yeah? Yeah. He needs to be tall. Yeah. Handsome. <laughs> yeah. And dead. Uh, the biggest change from the miniseries to the series is clearly that uh, we had our original Zev, who was. Eva Haberman, she dies and we replace her with a new Zev. When I took the, the character, I said, well, I would like to change it from just being a sexual object and uh, being nice looking and sexy. I would like to add some things. I uh, want her to have a good sense of humor. So that's what I did. And also she should be like, should show a certain kind of warmth that you know that she has a heart and she's a real person and not just a computer maid or robot maid. <laughs> thing. I guess <laughs> pretty girls can be lonely too. She can drive a lot of this stuff but because she's part cluster lizard she has her own agenda. She'll walk into dangerous situations because her DNA is telling her to. Sometimes the cluster li lizard comes through especially in uh, dangerous situations then she gets this extra strength and power and she's able to, to fight and knock everybody off. Now that's a right for you to remember. She really likes to explore new situations, new planets, and so usually that leads them into some kind of trouble. You don't know what's behind that door. Yes, I do. Fun. Kai, of course, is our, uh, is our still waters run deep hero. Just physically, he's dead. He's been dead for 2,000 years or something like that. Maybe one thing that's key to the character, to me anyway, is that he do actually doesn't want to be alive. I think being dead is its own kind of thing. Being alive isn't everything. Since he's a dead man, he will not act like a human being. So uh, he will always help us and, and has a sense of justice. He's got this weird non-morality being dead. 
And again, where normal people would go, well, okay, here's the situation, it's up for me to save the day. He goes, well, I'm not really motivated to do that. I mean, this doesn't affect me personally, you know, nothing does, so I'm not going to do what I should do. I am well qualified to speak for the dead. He's not searching to come back to life. And to me, that's kind of what's interesting. You know, if he was like, well, he's dead, but he really wants to live again, then it's how does he find the magic potion to sort of make him live again? But he's quite happy to be dead. It's really almost better for him. Really what motivates him is to say, once Stan and Zev have found a home, then he can float off into some black hole somewhere and be uh, never heard from again. Stan, for one, being the uh, quintessential loser, that's always fun because it goes, uh, certainly in the realm of science fiction, it goes against a lot of the brain where our characters are in, in Star Trek and Babylon 5, you know, they're, they're very serious and heroic, so to have an anti-hero is always fun. Way too many heroes out there. Way too many heroes. I mean, we need humanity out there. The relationship with Stanley changed quite a bit. They are teasing each other all the time and, and making ironic comments or so. It's like who has the greatest sense of humor, I guess. But you can still feel and see that they like each other. You were brave. It's hard to paint, you know, a really uh, brief picture of the character because the character is, is human. Reacting to these bizarre situations in the way that most people would react, I think. It's a robot! It's always great to have a guy who can go in and press the wrong button. You know, that one, oh, you know, blows up the planet. Well, that was an accident. Where's our capsule? Well, actually, uh, Lex just blew it up. Sorry. This is 790. It's a semi-intelligent robot head with the emphasis on semi. Get lost, creeps. All of you. 790's function, of course, is he has the information. Uh, the, the necessary computer information in science fiction about where we can go and this atmosphere is toxic and, and all that sort of thing you need to do that you don't want to spend a whole lot of time on. The fractal core was simply a point where the three physical dimensions of both universes intersect. He undermines a lot of things because in a very serious situation where everybody should be very, very serious, he, he still always takes the time to explain why you know, Stanley Tweedle should be uh, decapitated and set on fire. Tweedle? You give carbon molecules a bad name. So his agenda is very simple. I like Zev. Everyone else can basically go to hell. I think the characters are, are pretty complete. So what we try to do with each episode is, is explore an aspect of the character, explore some of the mythology of being in space and what that may be like, and, and pretty much destroying the mythologies as we go. That's it? I'm no longer a virgin? In a certain sense, that is correct. Technically, you are still a virgin. Well, I have some comfort. Stan isn't. You've got Zev, Stan, and they don't really get along that well. And she really likes Kai, but Kai's dead. He can't really do anything for her. Sort of not all of his parts are working. Um, so she'd like him, but you know, he doesn't, you know, so it's it's just it's an interesting dynamic of these kinds of three characters. And, that's where, we can, that's where you can really have some fun. I think the most fun uh, with having these people is that, again, they can get into situations where you would think, well, this is the way out, but because of who they are, they can't get out that way, and it has to be much more uh, uh, convoluted or, or fun or ridiculous or unexpected. Stan! I don't want to die. Goodbye, Stanley. Don't say that! We want to let you die, Stan! There is nothing more we can do, Zev. No. Happening between our three primary leads and our other half lead, uh, I'm in a really good mood about that. It's, it's really what we wanted to accomplish because television ultimately is an appointment thing. You either like the characters and you don't. It doesn't matter if we do well in the special effects or really that much if we do well in the scripts. I mean, that obviously is essential also, but if the, if the key cast don't deliver, then it doesn't work. And we've got a key cast too deliver big time. Stay tuned for more of the making of Let's, the series.